Hello everybody, this is Corey Mitchell with TradeThatSwing.com and this is your swing trading stock market outlook for the week of March 25th. Just a reminder that it is a holiday on March 29th, so the stock markets are closed. And each week I just go through the same process of looking at how the stock market is performing and basically that tells me how aggressively I want to be deploying capital. And if you're ever wondering where this article is, because it gets updated each week, if you go to tradethatswing.com under stocks and you go to stock market analysis and trades, you'll see it there within the first few posts, usually, because it's updated each week. Here are the trades that I'll be watching heading into the week. We have the best swing trading stocks list, that is just high momentum stocks, and then we watch for setups in those. And then there's also the current stock watch list, which is more patterns that are forming right now. So that looks at earnings plays, uh, a little bit of the ones that the main strategy I use for this list as well. And then we also have the chart patterns like rounded bottoms, contraction patterns, things like that. Uh, these other ones, a little bit more, I guess, longer term type things if you wanted to look at for some additional ideas. Let's look at how the indices are doing. So we have a number of different ones. We have the NASDAQ, a little bit more tech-based. We have the NYSE Composite, very broad array of stocks. The Russell 2000, smaller cap stocks. The S&P 500, large cap stocks. This is the Canadian index. And then we have Bitcoin and gold. So we can see the NYSE Composite, the S&P 500, and the Canadian index all in pretty strong uptrends right now, you know, just moving higher. So not too much to discuss there. The NASDAQ and the Russell 2000, definitely a bit more choppy. We've talked about this in the Russell. It's had these bigger declines, kind of clawed its way back. And now it's doing the same thing. It got to slightly higher high, it's pulled back. Uh, so it's just a little choppier. And the NASDAQ has been a bit choppier for a while now, like in, in back in February here, we were kind of chopping around a bit, then we had this pop up, and then we just went right back to a little bit choppier trading. So just something to be aware of if you've noticed that in your trading. I've talked to a few traders who were just noticed, like, yeah, that some of the stocks they were in, especially if they were more technology, weren't running quite as, as well as they were, you know, let's say back here at the start of the year. And if we look at the indices, that kind of makes sense right so don't be too hard on yourself if you noticed that bit of choppiness maybe some of your other trades worked out well uh, like I've noticed a, a bit of a mixed bag in terms of which is always the case where we're all, not all our trades are gonna win of course so it's been yeah you get stopped out on some and others are working well and if we look at the indices yeah that kind of makes sense not everything's just running higher at the moment Uh, oh yes, and then let's look at Bitcoin. So this is actually a pretty common scenario what we're seeing here. This was the prior high around 69,000. We had this big sell off, a 78% decline I believe, and then a rally back. When this situation occurs, you typically get a lot of whipsawing around the high, between 15 and 30% range. And you know we're kind of getting into that you know 20% big whipsaws up and down right now that often lasts for a month or more there is an article which discusses all of this in the article uh, in this market update and yeah it just looks at this scenario when it's occurred in the past ultimately the price has resumed higher after those whipsaws of course that is not a prediction it's just what has happened on prior occasions in this scenario gold We've talked about in other weeks as well, had its big breakout, kind of taking a pause here. What I don't love is that the, the miners are not confirming. Historically, this has not been a great scenario for gold if the miners are not confirming or even leading, and they're definitely lagging at the moment. You can see over the last few years, gold's run up and the miners are just hanging out. So historically, that hasn't been good, but I mean, that could change in the sense that if, if gold keeps going up and then the miners start going up and confirming and getting stronger, that 
that could sway it uh, in that direction. I, I do like this gold breakout. I think out of this multi-year pattern, it's it's good for gold and potentially entering a multi-year pattern. But this just indicates be a little bit, I'm a little cautious at this point because this could come right back down. We could stay here for another few months or a year or something and then we get the big big rally. So I, I just don't know. This, like I said, historically has not confirmed. If you want to watch a video looking at that, you can watch this video here where I talk about gold and GDX and their historical relationship. Uh, yeah, on the YouTube channel. Let's pull it up quickly just so you can see it. Of course, some ads. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop. Hello, uh, everyone. Yeah, so GDX Corey Mitchell here with trade.swing.com, and I wanted to, so if you want to watch at, that, check it out. Market health indicators are okay. So let's look at this. We have a chart of the S&P 500 up here. This first indicator is stocks above their 50-day moving average. So the red is the S&P 500. This turquoise is all U.S. stocks. And it's above 50, you know, they're both above 50, which is what I want. But we can also just see, like, for quite a while, this has just been hugging the line, all U.S. stocks, which just indicates that there's just, even though the S&P looks really good, only about half of stocks are in a short-term uptrend above their 50-day. And not that there's anything magical about the 50-day, it's just a crude measure of stocks in a, you know, above their 50-day average. And yeah, so it's just a little bit of a warning. And like I mentioned with the indices, we're, we're seeing that a little bit where we, at different times, we, we're not quite getting all the indices moving up every week. It's, you know, one's a little bit choppier, one's moving up okay. And that shows this little bit of a mixed bag environment where, yeah, you're, it's just not quite ideal, but it's still pretty good. Uh, volume not important to me at the moment. This shows the daily rate of change in percent of the S&P 500. And small moves are associated with uptrends, and I especially look for 2% drops. 2% drops in a single day are a major warning sign, and they, are, they occur frequently in bear markets in very choppy conditions. And going back almost a year, we do not have any 2% drops in a day going back to March 2023. And we've been in pretty much a uh, steady uptrend. We did have this bigger decline, but you'll notice uh, if you look back to those videos, we were looking at this indicator. And because we didn't have any of those big drops, uh, we were just, I said, this is most likely to be a kind of quiet pullback and then we move higher. And that's just because this, this, tells us as long as we don't get those really big drops in a day that sell us, that tell us big selling enthusiasm is coming in then you know usually the pullbacks are fairly muted once you start getting those two percent pullbacks we're seeing more volatility and definitely heightened risk on the long side this is the nyse advanced decline link advanced decline line advancing stocks minus declining stocks as a cumulative number and it's just marching higher along with the S&P. So that is a good one. Uh, this is up volume divided by total volume. We're really only looking for extreme values up at these top black lines or way down here at these this lower black lines. We want to see it above or below. And we're just hanging out in the middle. So nothing important there right now. The ultimate indicator, how many quality setups there are and how trades are working. I did notice a couple weeks back, I talked about this in last week's video, was more choppiness. Uh, stocks running up, but then quickly giving it back. And this week, the stocks I was watching, they, they moved a little bit more uh, cleanly, I would say, to the upside. And so that was a positive sign. But still, given the indicators we looked at. You know, it's not quite ideal, so I'm being a little bit more cautious. Cautious just means you can deploy less capital, or you can maybe go for a little bit smaller targets, or 
if things start pulling back, maybe have your trailing stop loss a little bit closer than how you would normally would. Just because we're aware, we're not quite in an ideal scenario. It's still pretty good, but we're not quite ideal. So that's how you can be more cautious. It doesn't mean just don't do anything. It just means protect yourself a little bit more. And like I said, there's multiple ways to do that. So sectors on the move, I don't typically trade utility or consumer defensive just because they're a little bit slower moving. They don't usually show up on my scan list, so I don't really discuss them. Uh, main sectors to watch. Energy, basic materials, financials, industrials. Technology and communication services came back on the list because they had a, a decent week last week, and they've kind of pushed up toward the middle of the pack and they're uh, on the one month and they're top uh, over the last three months. Energy, a little bit weaker last week, but still up. And they were like some of the best performers over the last month, energy and basic materials. Industrials, financials, also kind of in this upper mix. And financials hanging out here in the middle. Uh, so if you just kind of look at all of these time frames, these are the ones that seem to be overall doing fairly well. Uh, but as you can see, almost everything in the green. So overall, uh, most places in the market doing fairly well, some just a bit better than others. So what I'm doing right now, I'm willing to deploy capital on long trades, but still being a bit cautious. Things are good, but not ideal. And then you always have the option to day trade. Uh, lots of action swing trading right now, but I have People have said, you know, swing trading kind of goes through these phases where you're really active and then it's a little quieter and then you're active again and then it's quiet. Day trading gives you that option to continually trade every day. And then there's also the option to passively invest if you're just not interested in swing trading or day trading or being too active. You can passively invest and that's just buying uh, index funds or very stable type stocks at regular intervals and yeah there's also that approach as well so if you're looking for those kind of resources they're at the bottom of the article so that is your swing trading stock market outlook for the week of march 25th have a great week out there